What's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? Hey, uh, the last live stream just cut out because we don't have a good signal, so we figured let's do a little bonus time right here with you guys, hang out with you for a few minutes and answer some questions. So, of course, this live stream might cut out as well, um, but it's a beautiful day out here in Arizona. It's actually beautiful weather. Hang with Peter Sorensen right there. And um, we're doing a little bit of business right now. We're going to a business meeting at a coffee shop, so we figured we'd spend some time with you and give you the opportunity to ask us anything that you want related to Shopify, e-com, Facebook advertising, you name it. Another Q&A session. These are very, very popular, and, uh, and that's what I do. Peter, why don't you pull up on your phone? Why don't you pull up questions? And as you guys have questions, ask them. Um, Peter will basically, uh, he'll kind of browse through and kind of look at them. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations to each and every single one of you that are getting results. Every single day, dozens and dozens of people are posting screenshots in the 90-day challenge showing massive results. It's, it's exciting. Okay, so I love seeing that. If you guys have a, a screenshot of any results whatsoever, be sure to post it. Okay, be sure to post it. So Peter, I'm starting to see some questions come in. If I miss some, feel free to find some good ones. So what I want to do is I want to dedicate a few minutes and answer some questions for you guys. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see. Paul says, if you have some special wishes, feel free to contact us by clicking the Facebook icon in the right corner. I'm not sure exactly what that is regarding. <laughs> All right, so who's excited to see? Bobby says, I'm excited to see this. Who's excited to see every single day? It's like logging into this group. It's like a breath of fresh air, right? It's like, it's, like it's, it's exciting to see so many people achieving such amazing results. It's like literally like a breath of fresh air. Every single day you get motivation, you get encouragement, you get all of that. It's pretty exciting. So let's see, we're gonna be heading right over there. So what I want you to do right now is just take a second, ask any questions that you want, okay? We're gonna walk with you. It's gonna be a casual stroll here through the mall, be able to answer questions. So take, what questions do you have related to your Shopify store, related to your Facebook ads, related to your e-commerce, okay? And go from there. So I got somebody saying there's no sound. Can you guys tell me? Tell me if you can hear me or not. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. We're gonna go. We're gonna walk to our appointment now. And then if you can hear me, feel free to ask your questions. Okay, Akram says, I don't know how to find a hot product. I go to AliExpress, there are a lot of hot products. You know, there's no such thing as a hot product. Um, all that means is a product that you are guessing could sell. So don't get caught up on it. Just pick a few and guess and see if it works, okay? That's what a hot product is. It's a product that you're gonna take a gamble on. You think people would like it, okay? Um, Bobby says, it's refreshing with all the encouragement and excitement. Okay, Gene says, what is the best country to use uh, not in the US? You know, that's different. It will depend on the product. There's no like magical country. What you can do though is you can um, run worldwide ads and when you run worldwide ads, you can start to see where some sales come from. You can start to split test different countries and kind of see. So you're looking to target English, credit card speaking stuff. But listen, as a beginner, you shouldn't be starting worldwide anyways. You should start in the US. Um, Ryan says, I plan on making a multiple six-figure income off t-shirts before the end of 2018. What is my best application strategy? Um, Ryan, if you plan on making big income like that, the best thing you could do is look at successful shirt campaigns. Go back and study as many successful shirt campaigns as you can. Any shirts that have sold thousands, go back and start to try to put yourself in the mindset of why did these shirts sell thousands? What was so successful about them? Uh, Mogeet says, how much do I need to pay for Facebook ads? $5 a day, $5 a day. Annette says, when you stop an ad, when do you stop an ad when no sales are made? Well, if you follow our training, um, Annette, go back to day one and two. We're very, very clear about that. There's an exact strategy we're teaching everybody here, which is, you know, you run these little $5 a day ads. You run them for three to four days. If you don't make a sale, then you stop them. Okay, then we go, through, go into that in detail. All right, I'm going to follow you, Peter. I don't know where the spot is. Was it this way? It's right there? Okay. Um, Madhav says, Mad, Madhav, sorry if I can't get that name right. Thanks for all the info. Love you, man, for all the hard work. No problem, man. We're here to serve you guys. We're here to serve the community. This is free. We're just going to keep coming at you. Listen, we're going to keep coming. We're going to keep training you until you guys succeed. We are here and we got your back. Okay, we got your back. Frank says, always inspirational. Right on. Good to see you in here, Frank. Uh, what's better, niche or general store? Niche store is awesome, but that doesn't mean you go get a niche store. Here's, here's the secret. Do a general store and have the categories be niches. Niches will sell better, don't get me wrong, but 
when you form a niche store, then you're stuck in that niche. If you form a general store, it gives you freedom to be able to try this niche, that niche, this niche. So form a general store and have each category be a niche. That's how, that's the workaround around it. Charles, what would happen if you didn't pay the Facebook bill on time? If you don't pay your Facebook bill, they won't let you keep running ads. They'll turn off your ability to run ads. Tiki says Facebook ads, aside from the obvious sales, what metric numbers indicate a well-performing ad campaign versus an underperforming ad campaign? You know, that's such a difficult question because it's so specific to what you're trying to do. Um, besides sales, so if, 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 if an ad campaign is getting some sales, you know it's worth it, right? So if you, if you know the product, first is you gotta figure out is the product sellable. If you're getting no sales, then all the other mat metrics don't really matter that much. But once you're getting sales, then you can start to look at um, like cost per click, for example. On a lot of our ads, we'll just run, hey, if we're getting 50 cents per click or better, we know eventually we're gonna convert at a profit. So you can start looking at cost per website click. Um, another engagement that you can start looking at would be um, maybe a, a website conversion that's maybe a little bit lower, like an add to cart instead of a purchase. So even if people aren't buying, if they're adding it to a cart, you know you're on the right track. And then you know there's just a little bit you might have to fix. So there are other metrics to look at, but ultimately, if you're not getting sales, it doesn't matter. You could be getting, I see people post all the time, oh, I've got a thousand visitors to my site and no sales. Well, they're, they're looking at the wrong stat. Visitors doesn't matter. All that really does matter is sales. So maybe start with like, first things first, can you get engagement on a post? After you're able to get engagement, can you get people to add the product to the cart? After you get people to add the product to the cart, can you get people to purchase it? After they're purchasing it, can you get them to purchase it at a profit? After they're purchasing at a profit, can you figure out how to scale it up? Right, so it's kind of a process between those things there. Jess, how many days must I run with page post engagement and website conversions if I know whether I continue to cut or whatever? You know, I think you run like three to five days. So everybody has a little bit of a different strategy, but when I was first running t-shirts, I had a very simple strategy. I knew that I would run an ad for three days when I first started. So if I think back to when I was a beginner, I would run my ad for three days. That's all I would do, three days, three days, three days. Now, these days I might run it for four, okay? But you're not just running it for that long. It, like, if you're getting no engagement, if you're getting no nothing, then I don't know if I'm gonna run an ad. You know, so you're really looking for like, I'll run it for three to four days, see if I get some sales, see if I can get some engagement. Ronnie says, when is a good time to start retargeting an audience on Facebook ads? Immediately. Retarget them immediately. You can set up retargeting ads right off the bat. If, even if you only have 10 visitors, you can retarget those 10 visitors. It's really cheap. You don't have to wait till an audience builds up. Retargeting kicks in right away. As soon as, as, soon as somebody visits your site, you can retarget them. Uh, how can we put a shop now on Instagram? When you place an ad in Facebook, it asks if you wanna place it on Instagram. Choose Instagram as the source, and then that's how you can place a, uh, an ad. So it looks like a post, but it has an ad with a shop now button, that's the link. Zach says, drop shipping AliExpress products or t-shirts for beginners. Either one, they're two different animals. If you have a good eye for design and you're very creative, then do, not necessarily t-shirts, do print on demand. You might be doing cell phone cases, t-shirts, mugs, canvases, any kind of print on demand. If you have a good eye for design and you're creative and you can come up with slogans and you can come up with ideas, then do that. If you're a little bit better at just finding a physical product you think people would do, um, then do drop shipping. It's not as much creativity it's much more about looking and just being able to find products. So, okay. What kind of ads do you recommend for free plus shipping products? I recommend add to cart conversion, website conversion ads, add to cart metric. So with uh, free plus shipping ads, you want people to, you know, essentially add the product to the cart. Now, if you're gonna be running free plus shipping, my advice is to start your shipping really low, like 295, or 495 and then raise your shipping once you start getting sales and then once you start getting a lot of sales move to a purchase conversion so start with an add to cart conversion then move to a purchase conversion Facebook ads yes I don't know what your question is but yes Facebook ads miles what's up thanks for being here for, for a whole week miles appreciate that Annette says where do you sign up for the training you're here you're in the you're in you're here you're inside of it 90 day ecom challenge.com Let's see. Paul Bailey says, is there a free Techademics Shopify app? Yes, we have like this whole Techademics toolkit, but we just haven't been able to release it yet. 
There's like, uh, when, you, when you deal with the Shopify app store, you either have to have your products in the store or you have to have them private. We just haven't released anything yet. So until then, we've been recommending third-party apps for people. Avi says, how do I use Instagram organic marketing? Um, you can use Instagram organic marketing by you know getting basically building up your Instagram profile. You can do some Google searches, learn how to build up your Instagram profile, learn how to post picture quotes and content and use hashtags and then try to get popularity that way. You can like other people's posts, you can engage with them, but you know, personally, I'm not an Instagram organic marketer. I think my profile maybe has like 12,000 fans or something like that on Instagram. So I have done some organic marketing. I haven't done paid marketing there yet for my profile, but that's what I would, uh, I wouldn't focus too much on that. I would focus a little bit more on learning this $5 a day ad strategy because you can flip $5. If you learn how to do it, you can flip five to 10, you can flip 10 to 20, you can flip 100 to 200. It scales a lot faster. All right, let's see. Let's see, da da da. Um, let's see, hold on. Questions, questions, questions. Mark, thanks for the best ratings, you're welcome. Let's see, what else we got? Jenna, launched your store on Friday night. What niche did you focus on? Self-made babes, should I focus on nurses, teachers, or assistants? My advice is to focus on all of them. Don't box yourself into one niche. If you're focusing on women, take each category. You're saying like, what should I focus on? Um, nurses, teachers, assistants. What you wanna do is you wanna basically take each one of those and make it a category on your store. Products for nurses, products for assistants, products for teachers, products for whatever. Make each, make have a general store, self-made babes or whatever it is, have a general store and each one be a category. Where are we going, Peter? I'm following you. Where are you leading me? I'm leading all of you to the promised land. <laughs> He's lost, basically. I'm, I'm like following him and I have no idea where we are. No, we're enjoying a beautiful day. We're here live with you, just spitting value for the 90 day e -com challenge. And uh, you know, getting a little exercise. This is what we call stacking. We're giving value, training for the 90 day e -com challenge. Simultaneously, we're burning some calories, walking. It's not a bad day. And I think he's trying to create a new fashionable way to wear backpacks yes, here. Yes, because it's getting a little hot. He's not wearing them on his shoulders. He thinks he's cool. All right, what other questions do we have? What kinds of ads do you recommend? Oh, I already answered some of those. Okay, hold on, let me go down to the bottom. That's funny. Yo, Miles says, yo, Peter. Yo. Okay, Laura, so once you move to website conversion purchase, do you keep the PPE and ATC ads running too? I always keep the ads running until they don't perform anymore. Chris, why don't we share what that is for anyone that might not know the lingo? Okay, you wanna share? Sure. All right, so WC, we got website conversion. So that's the whole process. The type of ad you're looking to create a sell. PPE, page post engagement. Page post engagement is you're creating that social proof. You're getting the likes, the comments, shares on your post, on your ad that looks native. The whole idea is native advertising. So you're running ads, but the key in these page post engagement is to make them look and feel just like a normal post on Facebook that, that people want to like, they comment, they share with their friends. And now you're not only getting the traffic that you're paying for, but you're getting organic traffic by running that page post engagement ad. So that's PPE. And then the last one was, what was the last one already? Add to cart, right? ATC add to cart. So this is the process where you're getting people to add that product to your cart. In that process, you're getting leads. So even if you're not getting the sales, you're developing a list of potential buyers because when they go to add to cart on your Shopify store, they're actually putting in your e uh, their email address before they're actually going to the credit card information, right? So the vast majority of people are not gonna buy your product. But here's the thing, you're gonna build that add to cart list. That is a valuable asset. That's something you're gonna email market to, be able to remarket to, to be able to create sales over time. A little quick little explanation there, some of the t lingo. All right, <clears throat> let's see. What if my conversion ad is not getting results? If anything's not getting results, you can kill it. The whole idea is you're fishing around to try to find something that gets results. Uh, Zach says, website conversion or PPE. I like to run both. Page post engagement to get it some organic engagement, website conversions to try to get it sales and conversions. You gotta mix it up, okay? You do a little bit of both. Which days are most profitable to run ads in Facebook? You know, that would take a lot of split testing. I don't think there's any specific answer to that. I bet you it would depend completely on which niche you're in. You know, based on the niche you're in, you might be targeting people who are more likely to visit your store while they're at work. Or maybe they're more likely to visit it while they're at home. Or maybe they're more likely to visit it from their mobile phone or from their desktop. Or maybe they're likely to be night owls or early morning people. So there really is no 
specific thing, weekends, weekdays, it's probably all different based on what niche you're in. What else you got for us? Let's see. All right, keep asking. What is the best, broad or flex targeting? Um, okay, so what's, let's, let's explain. Broad targeting is where you might take an audience that's like in the millions. Flex targeting, um, and it's kind of like the same thing. Flex could be, flex is two types of things. Depending on which guru you're listening to, flex either means flexible, which is kind of like having like a general store, that would be called like a flex store, because you're flexible, meaning that you can basically do anything. Or flex targeting might be where you, where you go levels deep, where you take a general niche and then you break it down into little, um, little specific micro niches. Here's, here's my thoughts on broad targeting versus, um, versus detail targeting. If you can afford to invest more money in ads, if you can get sales from an audience that's in the millions, broad targeting, what happens is as you get sales, Facebook will start optimizing that pixel for you. So if you have an audience in the millions and Facebook is doing all the work optimizing the pixel, then essentially Facebook is doing detailed targeting for you. There, every person that buys, Facebook's getting smarter. So instead of showing the ad to all five million people, they're showing it to the ones most likely to buy. So if, if you can afford to, it's a little bit more of a risk, it's a little bit more of a gamble up front, but if you can afford to, you go broad, you go very, very broad, and you go and you basically uh, let Facebook do the work. Now, if you can't afford to go broad like that, then what you do is you start detailed. You do the work instead of Facebook. So instead of throwing your money at Facebook and letting them do the work, you do the work. You come in and you figure out, okay, what can I do to try to laser and find the audience myself? And then you go in there and you try to pick apart an audience. Now you're going for a smaller audience, like 200,000 to 500,000 people. You're getting a little bit more of a laser targeted audience. And now you're doing the work that Facebook would have done, but it's saving you money or theoretically saving you money. So most of us, that's what most of us do. Most of us literally find ourselves in a situation where we don't wanna throw a bunch of money at Facebook. So we go out and we do the research, we find the interest, we do everything. An example might be like the nursing niche. Well, if you were to just target nurses with a nursing product, there's millions of potential people in that audience. That might be a little bit too much. You wanna pick it here? Okay. That might be a little bit too much, right? So if you're gonna target nurses, millions and millions of nurses might be a little bit too much. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to narrow it down to a smaller audience, like 200,000, 300,000, 500,000 nurses, and try to see if your product can go there. Or you can go very, very broad, target all nurses, now you're throwing $5 a day, multiple $5 a day ads, trying to get some sales. But if you can successfully sell to an audience in the millions, Facebook, your pixel will mature, Facebook will get smarter. And if you can do that way, the one benefit is that you can have a store that's like literally just killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it for like, months, you can have an ad that's killing it for months. So it takes money to make money. If you're willing to go and do that, if you're willing to put in a lot of money up front, um, then that would be great. It would be great to go broad. Otherwise, I recommend detailed targeting. Um, Mark says, how to pick that audience. Mark, we cover that in detail in the 90 day training. We've talked, we've done like, we've spent I think a few hours now on how to find those detailed audiences and we'll do it even more. Um, How many people do you recommend to be in your targeting ad to make sales in free plus shipping products? Uh, 200,000, 800,000 if you're doing detail targeting or in the millions if you're doing broad. Let's see, <clears throat> question, if we have a list of 50,000 people or 24,000 websites, do you think I still need to run ads? Bobby, I don't know why you have a list of 50,000 people or 24,000 websites, but I wouldn't use it. I don't think um, that's a benefit at all. Uh, hopefully you didn't buy it. I don't recommend that. You shouldn't use a list of 50,000 people or 24,000 websites. Um, those usually aren't beneficial. Let's see. Is that Instagram best or Facebook on ads? I think if you can, if your product is like fashion or jewelry or something like lifestyle, um, Instagram works really well. If your product is a little bit more like wholesome or niche specific or something like that, Facebook tends to work a little bit more. Sebastian says, Chris, I'm struggling with even the two zero club. Sebastian, if you're struggling to get cheap video views, you gotta use a video that's viral. You gotta use it, start with a video, just go, just go find a video that's like, literally like 30 seconds or less, that is something amazing that people look at it and they say, oh my God, this is incredible, and they wanna tag their friends in it. If people aren't doing that, it's, it's the video. It's not you struggling with ads, it's the video. It's the choice of video, you gotta try another video. Okay.
What else you got? Um, do I recommend a new ad account per page or just run one pixel? One pixel, Richard, one pixel. Um, uh, Bobby, I'm not buying it's another business. No, I wouldn't focus on that other business at all. I would focus on converting ads. Um, would you recommend starting multiple stores? No, just one store. Just do one store. Peter, you want to jump in here and share with everybody? There's a lot of questions, but uh, here's what I want to do. I want to turn it over to Peter. Here's why. I've been, I've been working with Peter for a year, and Peter, why don't you answer some of the questions? Some of the people are asking about, like, they don't want, they're afraid kind of of doing paid ads, and a lot of people are asking for strategies for free ads. Um, I used to be a free marketer, and then basically working with Peter, Peter's always been great at helping people be able to find money or getting people inspired. Because listen, if you can crack the code, and if you can learn how to flip $5 and make profit on it, then you're, you're, you're gonna love the fact that you always got started with paid advertising. Free marketing is great, but if you can crack the code with paid advertising, your income skyrockets. So why don't you talk a little bit about mindset, money, and some of the things that you're an expert in. If you guys have questions for Peter, ask, and Peter, just go down uh, to the bottom there. And uh, and ask. So there's Peter Sorensen, awesome, you guys. guys. You want a coffee? I'm gonna grab one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That right there. See that? On the uh, right. Which one? On the right. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Peter Sorensen here. For those of you that don't know me, I've been working with Chris Record for many, many years. And uh, you know, I got started in this industry, uh, you know, several years back, and I struggled with money. I struggled with, you know, at the time I actually needed to come up with 20 grand to join a business to work with Chris Record and uh, get education in a particular industry is back in real estate. And I didn't have the resources, but yet I found a way to literally raise uh, over 20 grand to do that. Um, and you know, at the time I was struggling, making no money and I got creative. So the, one of the things that I've learned over the years, no matter what you're doing, no matter what business you're in, no matter what you're marketing, no matter what you're selling, right? You know, this idea that it, it does, you know, it takes some money. If you're doing paid advertising, it does take a little money. But here's the thing, one of my mentors shared with me a long time ago, he says, Peter, it doesn't have to be your money. It might, it might take money to make money at times, but more importantly, it takes creativity because it doesn't necessarily need to be your money. And, and if it is your money, that's cool too. The thing is, you've got to have the, uh, you got to shift the mindset to understand that money is all around you. That, you know, money is energy. And every single day, you know, especially in the world of digital commerce, e-commerce, there is literally billions and billions and not trillions of dollars that's floating and circulating all around you. Money is transferring, right? People are buying products. People are spending money. You know, right now, you know, Chris is going to go inside and he's going to spend money to, to get something to drink. And that drink, you know, uh, there's an exchange of value and that money is going to the business owner and then maybe that business owner is then, you know, using that money to pay employees and the employees that are taking that money and spending money in their paycheck and different things. Money is constantly circling. Money Money is just an idea. So when you understand that money is just an idea and you begin to understand, you know what? Money is all around me and I can go out there and get it. I can raise it. I can create it. I can tap into the power of my subconscious mind, right? If you're presently struggling with money, then understanding you're just struggling with an idea, right? You're an idea away from getting the money. You're an idea away of create, from creating the money. You're, you're you know, a process of perhaps writing down on a list of paper 10, 20, 30 plus ideas, tapping into the power of subconscious, say, okay, how can I get it? How can I raise, raise it for my business? How can I raise that money? So at the end of the day, when you understand and have this belief system that money is just an idea, right? Now, there's free marketing strategies. We started for years with free marketing, blogging, SEO, YouTube, doing YouTube reviews, uh, you know, connecting with people on Facebook, building up a Facebook friends list of targeted people in a niche. All of that is fine, right? If you, know, if you need to hustle it out with some free marketing strategies to make your first few sales, awesome. But once you crack the code of paid marketing, once you understand that money is just an idea, you understand that, you know, what, what if you needed to go out there and find a money partner or an investor? Some of you guys might need to just go out there and find a money partner or someone to partner up with that can put up the money for ads. Maybe you're taking this information in the 90 day e-com challenge. You're willing to do whatever it takes. You're taking action. You're learning. You're willing to do the ads. You're learning about, you know, sales copy and product research and how to raise, you know, how to be able to find the right products and getting some sales. But you know, what you, you might just need a partner, right? Maybe you need a money partner for a certain part of your business for the first phase. Maybe you say, hey, you put up the money. Money, I'll do the work, I'll do the ads, I'll handle product fulfillment, I'll do everything. You just kind of start the seed capital and you know we'll work out a split on the revenues that I generate until you get X amount return or whatever. So maybe it's not a long-term partnership, maybe you're not splitting the business with them, but maybe it's just a function of giving you confidence. If you knew 
that you had a financial backer to back your ads to be able, when you had scale scale ads. You had a product that maybe you started, you know, having a hot product you started selling. If you knew you had a financial backer to maybe buy inventory even, and then be able to take it to the next level where you're not only drop shipping from say China or other places, but you eventually source your own products and even ship products and you know offer two to two days to seven day shipping because you have a hot selling product. Well, that's going to take resources, right? Well. What if you had a financial backer? So again, you're just an idea away. The thing you need to think about is having a belief system, the expectation that you're going to do it, that you're going to succeed. It's not if, it's just when and how much. No matter what you do, no matter what product you sell, no matter what business you're in, you need to understand that confidence is the key to success. You've got to become confident, okay? You have to become confident in what you're doing, what you're communicating, what you're selling. You have to be confident in your message, confident in your product, and then you gotta test. You gotta be willing to accept the fact that you're going to lose a little bit of money. That you're not losing money, but it is an investment in your business, right? You're buying data, you're buying market research, okay? You know, companies out there spend millions and millions of dollars to do market research, to buy data. Why? Because they understand with that market research and in, with that data that they can turn around and in their business, the products and services that they're selling actually ultimately make more money because of the investment that they took up front with that, buying that uh, data, getting that research, etc. right? So if you might say, well, that's awesome, Peter. Well, I don't have the money. Well, first off, I'm going to challenge you, with you to stop saying that. I'm going to challenge you to stop saying I don't have the money because when you do that, you instantly shut yourself down. But start saying, okay, how can I get it? Where is it? What if I did have it? Where, where could it be? You know, who does have it? You know, who can I talk to that does have the resources that I could partner up with or create a win win scenario? Right? Many times in previous businesses, uh, you know, I didn't have resources and I would go and talk to people and say, hey, who do you know that does have XYZ resources? Who do you know that would be interested in, you know, making money on their money, you know, passively? Who do you know? Right? You start asking that question, you start tapping into your own subcon subconscious, number one start tapping into your existing network as well as you know this idea of who do you know okay because then you take the information and the training you know you know I'm not an expert in Shopify I understand the process I'm not an expert in Facebook ads I understand the process right I understand the, what does it take to be successful the knowledge the confidence the mindset right the ability to go out there and create the resources or get resources from other people if I don't have them because once you do that then you can scale a business 90 day ecom challenge we're teaching you we're teaching you uh, you know the ideas the strategies the value right every single day for free okay you know giving up our time to help you succeed because at the end of the day what's going to help us succeed as a company is helping you succeed personally right the more people we help here on the 90 day ecom challenge group make the first dollar online make the first hundred dollars in sales the first thousand dollars in sales the first ten thousand dollars in sales the first hundred thousand dollars in sales and you can share you know you learned it from techademics you learned it from Chris record and all the other powerful you know ecom sellers and you know powerful uh, entrepreneurs here inside of our group right that are teaching you so you know, if you have any specific questions about money, about you know, what does it take on the mindset, and you know, more importantly, you know, are you getting value from these trainings on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you are you grateful that you're getting this for free, right? That you know, there's a law of gratitude, right? You've got to have an attitude of gratitude. The you know, what you focus on expands. So if you're focused on being grateful, if you're focused on you know, giving thanks, you're going through the information, you're treating the 90-day ecom challenge like you paid 10 grand for it. I want to say that again. Treat the 90-day e-com challenge like you paid 10 grand for it. If you paid 10 grand for this information, do you think you'd be paying close attention? Do you think you'd be watching the training every single day if you paid 10 grand for it? Would you be taking a little bit better notes? Would you be taking more action if you put up $10,000 up front? Would you take more action in your business if you if you actually invested 10 grand for the 90-day e-com challenge? Probably would, right? So I want you to have that mindset. I want you to treat this group, this training, this 90 day challenge like you paid 10 grand or more for it, right? And if you have that right mindset, I guarantee you what, you'll be much more likely to take action, you'll be much more likely to succeed because you have skin in the game, right? You've got significant skin in the game. When I was in that business years ago with Chris and I you know, had uh, you know put up a $20,000 for my education in that company, I was motivated to do whatever it takes to A, make my, grand, my 20 grand back, right? So I hustled and did whatever it took for several months before I actually made that money back. It was not an overnight success, right? But guess what happened? A year later, I found myself, it was 20 to the time, a year later, found myself having literally 20, 30, 50,000 dollar months in that business, 
right? So was it worth it? Was it worth the, the, the upfront investment? Was it worth the time, the, the energy, the sacrifice? Yes, right? And years later now we're doing business together. So once you have that right mindset that this is a, a massive opportunity, you have an opportunity to build something great, right? And you're getting this value for free, but I don't want you to treat, like, treat it like you got it for free. I want you to treat it like you paid 10 grand for it, right? Um, you know, that said, I know Chris is back here. We're gonna probably wrap up soon. Um, really great info, awesome. You guys are incredible. Appreciate that. Brian Kane, appreciate you, man. So those of you guys are joining us live. Again, day 38, 90 day e-com challenge. Just been a answering your questions about, about Shopify, about Facebook advertising, having the right mindset, understanding money is just an idea, and really treating this serious, treating it like a real business. If you treat it like a business, it'll pay you like a business, right? But you gotta be willing to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, have the right attitude and mindset, and then obviously work ethic. You gotta be willing to fail, willing to go through the, through the struggles in order to get to the victory, okay? That being said, guys, Peter Sorensen here. I'm going to kick it back to Chris, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Hold on one second. Let's see what we got here. Boom. What do we got? Oh, look at oh, that. that's good. It's not quite on my – I'm going to have to work out harder tonight for this one. What would you get? I got a, a – was it a graham cracker? Hold on. Let's, let's compare these. Hold on. Come on over here. How, this is advertising 101 at its finest, right? Oh, exactly. So let's, let's take a look at this right here. Ready? Put yours up. Does this look like the sign we both ended up getting? I don't know. It doesn't quite look like the sign. See, that's what we ordered right there, the midnight mocha, the s'mores. It, if we would have waited 20, you know, 10 more minutes, we could have got like a uh, little half off. Oh, it was like half happy hour in like five minutes. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to wrap up, you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the time. Hopefully, you guys just enjoy every single day. We're coming at you with value for free. Our goal is to help you succeed. Nobody else in the industry is doing like this on a daily basis. We're here to help you, whether it's guests, whether it's us, whether it's whatever, we're here to help you succeed. So we got your back and we look forward to doing it over and over and over every single day with you, 90 days here in the Ecom 90 Day Challenge. See you guys in the next one.